Welcome back to another episode of Let's Chat Podcast, y'all. I am your host, Jojo. And I'm Zyra. Ooh. Ooh, we're back. First of all, I'm feeling this purple shirt. Mm-hmm. I've been on purple heavy lately. Purple's kind of always been one of my... I, all right, I never really had a favorite color. No, where did you get it? Because they're going to ask. Oh, oh, oh. I got it from Boohoo. I got okay. it from Boohoo. Um, me, as I said before, me and Boohoo got a love-hate relationship right now. I feel like they, they've been slacking lately um size wise and material wise but nonetheless that is where i shop that is where i get my clothes i fuck with boohoo and purple i'm really on my purple vibe lately like heavy like i've always kind of like purple my sweet 16 was lavender for god's sake whatever but huh oh but i'm really fucking with heavy so besides that um hey you look cute Got the hair did, freshly curled. Thanks. Got the eyes drawn mm-hmm. up. The eyeliner is fire. Good job, babe. You did it Thank yourself. You. Yeah. Why you ain't do mine? <laughs> I'm tired of her disrespecting me. I'm trying to go out with my... Not beat, but... She's a liar. Touch up a little bit. Baby, touch me up. You're a liar. I'll let you touch me up right after this. You don't need it. Okay? Thank you. But, like, you don't need it either. So, what are we really talking oh, about here? Oh, please. Oh, please. Anyway, how you feeling? How you okay. doing? Feeling Feel good. Great? Yeah. It's a busy day today. That's why we're all like dressed up. Uh, excited for plans. I am plan- not dressed up. <laughs> all right. But she's about to be dressed up. Excited yeah. for plans later. This is just a little top or whatever. But we're in something. Speaking little smack. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah, you got to kill two birds with one stone. Got to get ready before your plans record. And yeah. Yeah. We be trying to chill. We be trying to have like some regular chill copacetic ass day especially like when it's it, it's raining right now it's like real it's, it's really ugly. awesome stay at home shit it's ugly and you know sometimes we just we just have to commit to what we plan to do so no matter what the weather is yeah so we're gonna be outside a little bit after this but nonetheless we had to make it to you guys don't want to give you guys another week with no episode so you're welcome. Uh, you're Love saying you. that you're saying that like we be like missing all the time. No, 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 no. Nah. But um, we had our first Zoom meeting uh, oh, yeah. on Patreon. On Patreon. Mm-hmm. So as we said before, just in case you missed it, we are back on Patreon. We have changed our tiers. We have three tiers now, um, and they're cheaper. Yes, and they're cheaper. And all the tiers come with like the Zoom, so you guys could all join. Yeah, we wanted to have the opportunity to interact with people. you guys and get more people on the Zoom chats. Not even just to like interact with us and for us to like give that interaction back, but also to like interact with each other. Um, as I was telling her after that Zoom, I feel like if you are interested in subscribing to our Patreon or you already are on our Patreon, um, Take advantage of Discord. Take advantage of everything within the tier that you've selected to subscribe to. But all in all, Discord is the one of the best things. One, not only is it direct contact to us um, in terms of messaging or voice messaging, but also with each other. And I feel like, as we said, our purpose of the platform is to give um, you know, the community support for those who don't have it. And I want Discord to be that for all of us, not just, oh, I'm just going to go in there and talk to Jojo Diver. Like, oh, hey, like I'm making friends that also are Mm -hmm. a part of this community and that listen to our platform. Yeah. So take advantage of that. Download the app. It's free. Um, And I think we'll actually add that as just a baseline um, thing for us with Discord. Yeah. Yeah. That's all the juice I got. That's all the update And if I got. you can't, it's totally fine. Just give us a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, yes. wherever you listen to the podcast, or subscribe on YouTube. Anything helps, but um, it's free to give a, a, a rating. So go ahead and give us that rating, girl. I was about to say, it don't hurt it's to double free click 99. or like, you know, I'm playing. It's free 99. If I fuck with it, I I like it. If it's not for me, I'm swiping. And yeah, that's, that's you, okay. you don't even have to leave like a comment. You could just put the five stars. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> so in other news, um, a few days ago, 
I had been on Instagram and saw some shit. And it wasn't even like, I don't know why. I think it's because I woke up to a text message and I ended up checking, which is a bad habit. But I went on Instagram for some reason. And the first thing I saw was this pop-up of a, uh, I don't know how to say it. How would you describe her? She's she's, she's like, I think she's pretty well known. She's within. a rapper, yeah. uh, a reality TV star, yeah. social media I don't know if you guys know who it is, but Saya, I hope I'm saying it right, but uh-uh. you better be I saying think, it right. right. I, I think, think that's I think right. that's right. Um, but yeah, I woke up to her face like like it was like a selfie. I don't even want to say a selfie, but basically it was like a crying photo of her on the top of my feed and I'm like, "What the fuck? This is not giving this is not giving her vibes." My new lately we've been watching um this this reality TV show that she's on. No, no, no. We watched like two episodes. So she she's been on three seasons of the Sisterhood of Hip Hop. And then we saw like one episode where she was on the Baddies East yeah. with Natalie Nunn. So pretty much like the Bad Girls Club. And I stopped watching that, but her uncle had us watching it. And yeah. it it was a little entertaining, not gonna lie. But I was like, what is this stud doing with like all these like super femme? I mean, they're not gay. Some of them probably are bi, but what is she doing with these like super femme dramatic girls? Like I didn't watch too much of the show, but she was in it and I was like, oh wow, it's giving drama. Yeah, I don't My Cause y'all know how these girls are. Like they literally fight all the time with each other. They live together, then they'd be performing and like traveling. Yeah. But it uh, like the show is literally just about like arguing for the most yeah. part and drama. I'm not crazy about the Nicky Nacky back and forth drama shit, but for some people that's entertaining and that's cool, whatever. But aside from that, her, I guess I'm assuming, I'm not sure. I was in the comments trying to figure out why this post of her crying or upset made it to her page. It was very unusual. All of her posts are usually, you know, positive for the most part or like very professional and photographed yeah. and like you know she has a she upholds an image just like yeah. anybody she else she has almost who, a million followers right so. um so it was just very unusual so i clicked on her page and i i continued to see other unusual posts um in regards to her and i guess someone she was dealing with and i got to read in the comments i learned that one from my girlfriend because if there's one thing that Dara's gonna do is she gonna be in the comments i get, however i do not you get all the tea from the comments i mean obviously the caption but i'm like if something's off people be doing their research yeah yeah so. people and then people be putting two and two together they're like uh-uh this isn't her this is like yeah. this is like her ex girlfriend and her girlfriend or her wife. I don't know. Um, and the girl, her from former girlfriend, her name is Danae Marie. She's kind of like she she does have her own business. She's like a little uh Instagram baddie, like whatever. Um, but she posted so many pictures of them, mainly Saya, and one of them was like Saya getting arrested. Saya trying to jump off a balcony. Mm -hmm. Like, a video of her and Zaya where she's twerking or whatever. And, like... And but she like was captioning it. The in, captions in were the problem. Where it, yeah, where it was, like... She was pretending to be Saya. Yeah. Like, saying, like, I just love to be outside and I love to cheat on my girlfriend. I don't deserve her. Like, on That's some really shit. weird shit. Like, caps, all in caps, like... And I'm like, you have to be like some sort of like crazy to hack into your girlfriend's phone, post all her business and your personal business, and then pretend to be her. Yeah, that's different. In the caption. Listen, so if you wanted to throw shade, do it on your own platform. Why hack your former partners or somebody else's platform mm -hmm. to like be that shady? Right. I I mean, it's not in me to do it. I understand being in a position. I think we've all been in a position where we dealt with someone that mm -hmm. that really did us dirty, and we we you know you get to a point where you kind of want to match that energy, and you're like, all right, how yeah. how do I hit them where it hurts? Um, with that being said, if that's really what your intentions were, you could have done it in so many other ways that didn't involve overtaking her social media. 
Um, not only because that, that's between you guys, yeah, and you know, like I said, there was there could have been other ways if that's what you wanted to do, but like social media, like where the world, like is on now her page, involved right, and sees like your this other aspect of the life that is different from what you've curated on social media. Right. You know, it's just, it's just crazy. And that shit, you can't take back. You can't take that back when you do crazy things like that on social media. Yeah. Those pictures are still up. Like obviously on it. she got to it and she deleted it, but like they're still up. And I think what the pro what the problem is, is like the caption. It was like when she was getting arrested, the caption basically said that she was getting arrested for domestic violence. Then, um, she also talked about how like she has like addiction problems and she also she also talked about how like she Saya used to like abuse her ex-girlfriend. So it's you're like accusing someone of like a lot of things. Granted, the girl is getting arrested in one of the pictures. We don't know what she's getting arrested for and it's like a video. But like that's embarrassing. And obviously people make mistakes and I'm not here to like defend her because even when Jojo sent me this, I'm like, oh, it's giving drama. Like clearly there's evidence. So clearly they might be both toxic. But I was just like, I don't know. Also, after seeing her on the baddies East, I said, maybe this is what her lifestyle is. And she's just like around this. And maybe she is this person. But I obviously could be assuming and in the comments, people were, like, supporting her still. So, like, it don't matter. Like, you, like, it's it's so crazy. Like, there's always going to be supporters. Like, I could post a picture of you, of some shit like that, domestic violence. People are still going to support you. If they love you, they're going to support you. Which I don't know if I agree with. But. Listen. Yeah. It's just you don't really know down to the nitty gritty what's really happening. Mm -hmm. So, I feel like people are going to give you the benefit of the doubt of course because they feel bad you. and in the event that is true then if they don't fuck with it they don't fuck with it you know yeah but it, it's people. just i also feel like when you get to a certain level of like fame it's a little toxic how much people could support you no matter how bad of a person you are and i'm not saying this girl is a bad person i'm just like comparing it to like Kanye West and like Donald Trump like it's like these people have said some wild shit and they still have mass supporters they're not canceled and like this whole cancel culture we, we talked about before it's not a thing bro they be canceled for like two days yeah I'm saying nah. like, once you have the followers and the and, and the fans like it's crazy. I mean, but all in all, what do you want? It's for people to be exiled or something? No, like, I, I'm not saying that. I'm just people saying. People are liable to change. Of course. They're not going to be that piece of shit forever. Yeah, I'm not, yeah, I'm not or, saying that. I'm, I don't know. Any, you know, I don't know. It really depends on situations. But, yeah. But, you know, people are going to ride if they know you, don't know you, if they really fuck with you. It really comes down to, you know, everybody has their opinion and perspectives. And if they ride with you, it's because they agree. Or, I don't even want to say agree, but. I also feel like. When you are dating someone in this light, like in the light, I'm talking about like Saya is a rapper or performer, reality TV, you kind of have to be okay with like what comes with that. And in the caption, it was like, oh, I just, the girl was saying, I, she, I just want to be outside and drinking, coming home at 4 a.m., 6 a.m. Like, I can imagine that's what it's like to date a celebrity. Oof, I'm exhausted for them. Now and you don't have, they live celebrity because in the same breath I right. feel like you you have to be okay with expect? that lifestyle. It's not about the fame. It's like you have to be like, can you keep up? If this and is, is and is this what you want? If this is the person, if you met this person like that, you already fucked up. If you thought that I met you like that, but I'm gonna be able to change you because that's wrong. Like, yeah. people are gonna change for who they want to change for. Mm -hmm. But all in all, I just don't agree with like if that's how you met someone. And then you just expect all of a sudden things to be different because yeah. you're in the picture. Like, nah. I don't know. I always remember when you would, I don't know when you mentioned it, but you were just like, when people show you who they are, accept that. Like, that is what it is. Accept that for that. Don't yeah. have this idea of, oh, maybe that's not really them, you know? Maybe it's just a, mm -hmm. you know, it's just certain circumstances. And sometimes it can be, but... Mm -hmm. Oh no! Just don't be surprised if it actually is them. Yeah, that's why I was saying. Like when I was reading, I was like, "But this is who you met, and like, are you surprised that this is how they act?" That part. 
I mean, it is what it is. But yeah, drama. Yeah, but she recovered. She got her page back. I don't, you know, a little bit after sometime later in that day, you know, she had put out um, basically saying how her page was hacked and it was just some crazy shit. Um, So, but that was interesting. I just kind of thought I immediately sent it to her and I was like, yo, this is crazy. So that's yeah, kind of no, I'd, I'd be so out of it. I'm like, who's this girl? Yeah. Who's she Saya? Know him, but I'd be like, you who is ju- she? We were just, uh, uh, I said, yeah. I don't know, I don't why, know I do, why I do it, but I got to keep her in the loop. I never, heard, I don't even never even heard any of her songs. Have you heard? Anyway, that's it for our lesbian news. <laughs> Not me. Not me talking shit. So in this episode, we're going to be talking about the holidays. They are right around the corner. They're not around the corner. They're here. They're here. They're here. They're here. And at times, they could be a little bit intimidating, um, especially for the queer community for obvious reasons. You know, not everyone accepts you for who you are. And sometimes you have to literally be in uncomfortable spaces because this is your family. Yeah. Um. And not saying that you have to be okay with disrespectful family members. That's not what I'm saying either. But, like, I feel like for the major, I mean, me personally speaking, majority, everyone seems accepting. But, you know, there's always one or two people who say, like, weird comments. Yeah, they can't wait and for you to come through so they can throw the shade. And you got to ignore them. I mean, but, yeah, we're going to talk about the holidays and basically how you can make the most out of, like, this holiday season. I said this before, but, like holiday like around the holidays i don't know what it is like i don't know if it's something in the air or the fact that the time changes and and people like some people don't like this like the whole like can we stop talking about like seasonal depression like that's not a thing or like some people are like it is a thing and like for me i really do think that it getting dark at 4 or 5 p.m is a problem for me like it affects me because i'm like damn like that's it. It's dark out. Like, wh- what are we going to do? Like, it's time to go to bed already and yeah. start over and wake up again. And, like, granted, you wake up and the sun's up. But at the same time, like, you still want to have a day after working and not feel like it's already nighttime. Like, I have to go to sleep. I'm tired. Yeah. It definitely throws the mood off. Yeah. You get super, like, tired, drowsy. And it's like, it's dark out. Like, I, I was thinking that, too, because, like, when I leave work, it's pitch black out. And I'm leaving work at 6 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Like before? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it's like, it's just crazy. Cause oh, you, you're saying like when you leave work, like you're getting out of work. I don't know why you thought yeah, you were yeah, going. Yeah. Uh-huh. And it's it's only 6 o'clock. It's like, 6 p.m., yeah. What it, What is this? It's... I, should I just go home and go to sleep right now? Like right, and I, it's like well, what, what, what? We we have to cook or like we have to go to the gym. It's like you wanna make something out of your day to feel like a human because it's like if you just go to work and that's all you do, you're just working and your life is surrounded about around something else, but not like around your hobbies and like what you like to do outside of work. And I feel like sometimes when it gets dark, you just get unmotivated. Mm-hmm. Obviously. On top of that, it's just like, it's the holidays. I mean, on the East Coast, Jersey, whatever, it's getting colder. That's also a problem because you just can't be outside how you want to be outside. Um, and, you know, cap- capitalism and society has put a lot of pressure around the holidays and like buying gifts and you you know the decorations and putting that and like we we like doing that so that's not a problem with the decorations and we reuse things so it doesn't feel like we're always spending money but there there is a lot of like pressure just around like the holiday season and before I remember reading somewhere where it said like the holidays is just like a really stressful time for people when it really shouldn't be and that's when most people want to go want to go to therapy like the first time I went to therapy was like the month of December and she was like booked. But I was like, yeah, I have to see. I have to talk to somebody. Like I was just so overwhelmed. And if you're in school, that's like um uh fi- uh final season or whatever. So you have a lot of <laughs> yeah. exams from different classes. It's like, oh my God, I need a break. What is happening? And then you think you're gonna get a break when you go home for the holidays, but as a queer person, sometimes 
doesn't you're feel like better off at staying in, staying in, in school, school or staying home yeah. or just staying with your friends and your chosen family. Mm-hmm. So for you, I guess in this holiday season, like have you thought about like what you want to do a little bit differently or like basically what's going to bring you joy in this holiday season? Honestly, have you thought about it? I have not. Okay, so so tell me. Think. I just I don't, I don't know. I haven't really been in the I'm ready for the holiday kind of spirit mm-hmm. or just like that mindset of like, okay, the holiday's here. Like, you know, that sense of warmth and comfort and with family gatherings, regardless of whether or not it's going to be fuckery, because how often, at least now in days, how often are you truly spending time with the whole family, you know, as a, yeah. as a whole right um because i always say for like us when we were kids we always had those family gatherings our parents made it a point to have those those family gatherings and now that we're all grown and everybody has kids it's just like nobody's making the effort anymore especially now that you know um our grandparents aren't around i guess that was really the 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 thread that was holding us yeah together um but now everybody's kind of just on their own type shit um but yeah this year has been an interesting year for me i'm sure it's been an interesting year for a lot of people um so i've just i think in these last couple months towards the end of the year my mindset has just been drifted and and just into so many other things that don't involve celebrating Mm -hmm. the holidays yeah. So that's just me right now. But usually I love when the holidays come around again because I love to be around the family and something about the holidays usually. I don't know if it's just me reminiscing on my on my time when I was younger of how like magical it would feel mm-hmm. back when we were younger. Um but I think, you know, I'm usually pretty psyched and yeah. hype about that. Mm-hmm. Um yeah. But now it's just it was just the season that I'm in. Um how about yeah. you? Um so this holiday season I feel like okay, so this season has been really stressful for me. Really stressful for us personally. Which obviously we haven't gone too deep into the podcast. I think it's something that we want to do more on Patreon. Um just because now not that we're getting bigger, but it's like you got to be a little bit careful about what is it that you put out there into the universe and what is it that you talk about. Because sometimes people listen and support, but that doesn't mean that everyone They're not rooting wants, for you all the time. Right. It don't mean everyone sometimes, wants the best for you. Yeah. They're kind of rooting on your uh-huh. downfalls more so than your, yeah. you know, your mm-hmm. your accomplishments and stuff. Right. And it's just so much stuff that it, I think it would take away from the podcast. I don't know. Let us know what y'all think. But um, I was starting to turn into a Grinch. Like, I was telling my friends, like, because they were like, oh, we should do, like, we should exchange gifts and things like that. And I was, I told them straight up. And I still feel like this. I am not doing gifts this year. Like, gifts is stressful. And I'm at a point where I really want to get my finances right. And I want to pay off some debt. And I can't do that if I'm over here buying gifts. Mm -hmm. And like, yeah, we see all these like holiday deals and Black Friday and Cyber Monday. But if you really think about it and look into it, they just, they like less, it's not, it's not a discount. Like we think it's a discount because it says discount. But if you were to look at it a couple months ago, you're probably buying it for the same price on like Cyber Monday or uh thanksgiving or whatever like you just kind of have to like be be aware of like the prices especially with amazon i know they do that a lot they be changing prices left and right so sometimes you think you're getting something for a good deal and like i am i am big on that i'm like but it's on sale but if you if if i would have been watching it a long time ago it's not on sale like what like five dollars cheaper like so yeah, you're going to pay in shipping. Yeah. And it's like, don't, don't get scammed. Like, yeah. let's say it's like something that you guys really want, you really need. Okay. But I told my family, I was like, well, my family, like I said, holidays could be stressful. And I noticed that every year was like, we would spend the holidays together and we would love it. But 
it was like buying the gifts, then wrapping the gifts, um, then traveling because we had to travel, then more wrap wrapping more gifts. Like it was like we were never done. Like the it was a lot of gifts, and we do have a lot of kids in the family, but it was still like a lot of stuff. And then the cooking, and we weren't there for just one day. We would be together for like a week. And it's like, who's cooking today? And what are we eating today? And then it became like a stressor on like, what are we eating? So we decided, I said, I've been saying this for a while. Let's go on vacation where we don't have to worry about anything. We just go on vacation. And like the food is there. Like, so we're going to go on a cruise. But with that comes spending money. So I said, well, we're not doing gifts then. Because if we're already going to be spending money on, you know, a trip, then it just makes sense to not get gifts. Only get gifts for my brother, who's, it's his actual birthday on Christmas, so we got to celebrate his birthday. And then the kids, obviously, because I feel like for them, it's still, like, gifts. Like, yeah. it's, the gifts are big. Like, if you're not getting the kids a gift, that's a little crazy. Yeah. And so, as adults, I feel like you're okay. And, like, maybe you could, like, maybe something small, like, but I just feel like sometimes we get so caught up with, like, what do I get this person? And, like, ugh. I don't know. So um, I'm trying not to be a Grinch and like trying to do things with friends that I originally was like, maybe I should just cancel this shit. But then I was like, no, like they're counting on it and like they're looking forward to it. So I'm not going to cancel it. So just like doing things with friends as well um, and like pushing myself because you were saying like, as adults, we think about what it was like growing up and like that holiday spirit. It just seemed a little bit better. And I thought about it and it's something I wanted to talk about later on, but I'll just talk about it now. Like now we're the adults. Mm-hmm. So it's like up to us to make it fun. Our parents are tired, one, or they're busy, like, cooking. They really like cooking. They really like taking over. So it's like, okay, you want to cook? Then let me do something else that's going to, like, make it fun and less stressful. So I remember one year we did, um, like, games with my family. And I really wanted to do it because I was like, it's my brother's birthday, so I feel like we should do something different and not just feel like Christmas. Like I wanted to feel like his birthday. So we found like a bunch of games on TikTok that we did and we did it with the kids. And then there was obviously some drinking games involved, but we also made sure to have things for the kids that were fun for the kids and then were fun for us. Um so there's a lot of games out there on TikTok that you can see that aren't just like drinking related. And I think that it's up to us to just bring the fun and make it fun. And I feel like when everyone's just like sitting on their phones and just talking and bringing up things that you really don't want to talk about, like, so how's your job and how's that going or how's school and when are you going to graduate or you got a boyfriend, you got a boyfriend, you're not married yet. Uh, You know, what are you waiting for? Yeah. What are you waiting for? Or like kids or like, um, when are you getting married? And like. Oh my God, you're like, you're fat. When it's controlled, you're fat. You, you can like control they love that bringing up your weight. Right. And that's by taking initiative. Mm-hmm. You know, if you're going to be in those spaces, what do you want to get from being in those spaces? Right. If you feel like it's not going to help you to be in those spaces because you're going to be in this negative mindset and mood, then don't go. But if you feel like, you know what, I'm going to go. And I'm going to pull the strings on this. Right. On this and thing, I'm going to make know? it a vibe. And like, all right. you need is one other person to be on board with you. Like, get your cousin, get your sibling. Be like, yo, let's play some games. Like, let's plan. And it comes with planning. Yeah, yeah. you can be spontaneous and be like, let's do karaoke. Yeah. But like, you could be spontaneous and like, let's do karaoke. But it comes with like some planning. So like, for example, we did this this game where it's like a twerking game. And I say that in quotations because you don't got twerk. But... You could do it yourself or you could buy the supplies on Amazon because I found like an actual thing. But pretty much you put ping pong balls in like a tissue box and you wrap it around your waist and the person who gets the most ping pong balls wins. And like I have videos of like my dad doing it with like my niece and it's it's so funny. Like, I don't know. It's just funny. Like you see how people move their body looking crazy or some people trying to I can't twerk. So it's just a tragedy. 
Um, then there's another one where you are blindfolded and you're trying to get as many um, cotton balls in your bowls and people are gassing you. Like you have hype men behind you and you think that you're like killing and you're like, oh, I'm getting all these cotton balls in a bowl. And in reality, you, 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 ain't doing shit. you ain't doing shit. Like you're not doing much. And we did it with my niece and nephew too. And my nephew, he has autism, but he could still play. And you know, he did, he took his blindfold off. He was like, I'm going to do it my way. And mm. he was cheating, but we were like, whatever. It is what it is. Um, And it was funny. It's cool that mm-hmm. y'all try to keep the kids in, in it, too. Because right. sometimes, you know, you come and you're just like, I'm just trying to have this adult vibe. Like, are you trying to be with and, your cousin? And I get that, mm-hmm. but in the same thing, like, you gotta if make there's it not fun that for them. many kids around and there's more adults, then it's like, you got to involve them because, you know, they essentially, they all they got is y'all, uh-huh. you know? So it's like... And this is what they're going to remember. and This is yeah. what they're going to think about. Um, And, like, my little brother, he loved this so much. He was like, this is, like, the best birthday. Like he loved yeah, it, and we then we started playing like the regular games, like um, and I don't even play this, but I was surprised. We started playing um, what's it called? The ping pong that you throw in the ball, the fucking, you put the ping pong. pong. Yeah, pong. Is that what it's called? That's just pong, and that's just such it's a like co- beer pong. Yeah, beer pong, whatever. And it's such a college game, mm-hmm. and like my mom does not play games. This lady be like, no, 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 no. And she was out here playing pong, killing it too. Yeah, she was killing it. I Yo, I was videos. shocked. I was, and mind you, I don't like playing pong, but something about like playing with my family, like they got a little competitive. Um, and it was fun. And like even my little brother was playing pong. I don't know if that's the best thing. We're over here teaching him how to like <laughs> play You're these definitely games. Preparing him, right? That's good. But it wasn't alcohol. Like we didn't even do it with alcohol. Like we were Who drinking on the side, anymore? but it was like it was too much to be like washing. The, it was too much. So. Little things like that, that it's like now you got to bring the games. Or if you guys like the board games, y'all could do that too. Mm. Uh, I know my family, no matter what, they're always going to play dominoes at the end of the night. So that's their shit. Um, But yeah, you got to bring the fun. So think about it, what you want to do and how you want to make it different. So we actually asked, like we've been doing lately, which Mm -hmm. we forgot to open with a quickie. But it's okay, because we we have some other juice to give y'all. That's true. Um, But... We did ask on our Instagram story, what do people do to kind of just get in that, I guess, holiday spirit? Somebody said shopping for decor and gifts. Another said by remembering not to stress about buying gifts because I'm everyone's gift this year. Period. Period. (laughs) That's what I'm saying, bro. Just come with the fun. That's it. Another one is blast me burrito. What? I, I'm not going to read that one. Mi burrito sabanero. What is that? It's a song. Mi burrito sabanero. Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> I'm going to put it later. Okay. It's a Puerto Rican song, too. Yeah. Um, no, you definitely so heard shocker, of it. It's but mm-hmm. uh, another one said that Chris, uh, putting the Christmas tree up right when Halloween comes around. People really do that. Nah, good for you because we need to be on top of it. We did We did it early last year, like as soon as Halloween was done, like mm-hmm. maybe even Halloween day because we were like, we're not going to be late this year. And I feel like we're going to be late this year. No, we're, we need to do it like, like this weekend. Because it just sucks when you put it up December 1st. It's just like, all right, by the time the 25th come around, you, you know it takes you a while to take it down. But it's just like, sometimes I feel like if you're on top of shit, you're just like, damn, I didn't really get to enjoy it. Right, that. like just put it up before Thanksgiving. Yeah. And I think yeah. that a month and some change is good enough. Yeah. <laughs> um. Some people said Christmas music making holiday dinner um, plans with family and assigning everyone a dish to make. I know that's right. Um, Again, setting up Christmas tree, playing Mariah Carey's Christmas album, and Christmas music and sending my ex-girlfriend a Hanukkah package. Girl, don't send her a thing. Don't send her a thing. Uh, But yeah, people are getting into the spirit, which I love it. Love it for y'all. I mean, let's be real. In all actuality... It's, I feel like it's the time of the year where even though it can be very stressful for a lot of people, it can also not be, and mm-hmm. it can be a really good time. Mm-hmm. You have fucking how many months out of the year to be stressed about so many things. Right. Um, find something that you're grateful for. Mm-hmm. All it really is is coming down to just gratefulness, right. you know, gratitude. It's not mm-hmm. even about the gifts. It's not about the – it's just – 
being present with the people you want to be present with and enjoying spending that time because we really don't fucking have forever, yo. That's what I think about too. Like, I always think about like, you just never know when like, this is going to be like your last holiday with this person. So like, I think that's like PTSD that I have uh, of like losing people in the past, but like, you just never know. Um, But yeah, some tips about like, um, how you can kind of get into that holiday spirit, um, especially for people who don't have family around or like their family and them are just like on rocky terms all the time. We always talk about self care, but I think it's just so important to do it like before, during, and after like the holiday season, just because it could get so hectic but i think having someone to talk to is like major like having a friend who like you can text throughout like the holiday season and like just being around people who make you feel good um or doing things that make you feel good like watching your sh- a favorite show or like watching a movie or making art or like i don't know just literally anything that's self care to you And I think that sometimes we think that it always has to do with like, well, I don't have the money to do that. Sometimes it doesn't have to do that. Like you could literally do things at home that are going to make you feel good. Um, Yeah. Honestly, when you really find, when you sit down and think like, I'm grateful for the simplest things. Mm -hmm. It's just, you feel like a weight lifted off your shoulder. Yeah. Like. The littlest, simplest things. Mm -hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't have an example to give right now, but I can say that if there's anything that I've been doing over the past couple years, as I'm getting older, it's finding like just comfort and excitement. I guess like, how do people say it? Like when you romanticizing the daily things in your life. Pretty much. I think that when you're present, you're present in the sense of your daily Mm -hmm things yeah um it could really help yeah i i think that's i think that's major like for like this morning we went to a workout class and like like we got to go to that workout class like we're paying for like a lot of people do not even have can't make fucking rent or money to like could barely afford anything for us to be able to like be able to afford a, a class that does like cycling strength yoga um like we get to do that not only that financially but it's like our body allows us to do that Mm -hmm. like some people are in so much pain all the time that truly can't work out or just like are sick and can't like they just truly can't do the things that we are able to do like we're young and we got to take advantage of it yep um i put number two here talk about boundaries with your family beforehand and like don't allow like microaggressions to just like be thrown around left and right like personally i don't have to deal with this but like i feel like the older generation and mainly hispanics like they don't uh, they don't know what microaggressions are and like they'll say things little things here and there that don't make you feel good like i mean in the last episode you had mentioned something about like some people are like um they tolerate you and like they don't respect you and like in the holidays it's like mm, like i know you're gay and like but like i don't want to hear it type of shit like it's like but but no, no one was talking to you about it so <laughs> right. it's like they they make it they make shit worse just by talking yeah or like even bringing things up that you, that you know is gonna take a wrong turn i um, feel like they also mm-hmm. always see you as that kid if they were around when you were growing up, they would see you as that. Like, you could be thirty years child. old and they don't respect you. Yeah, it's like they're... what? And 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 when they ask you nut butt shit like that mm-hmm. to them, it's like, oh well, this is you know I haven't been around you in some time. Mm-hmm. This is the way, like I guess to 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 talk and right. and, and they think it's funny. Integrate, yeah. They think it, like some people really don't have boundaries and don't don't understand and like. Like the questions of like, oh, well, do you have a boyfriend? Mm-hmm. And you could be look, you could look the gayest ever, and they'd be like, you have a boyfriend? Yeah, that's facts. Where's your boyfriend? How come you bring your boyfriend? Like, 
And you can look gay as hell. I'm talking but about. But I also feel like sometimes that's done on purpose. It's no, not they even, do that. It's so then even, it's like you're forced to come out. Yeah, again right. Again and again it's and not again. Even, right. Because you could have just been like, oh, like, how you doing? Like, are you dating? Are you single? Like, oh, right. okay. Not like, you got a boyfriend yet? Right. Like, you're being fucking corny. Shut up. Right. So, like, I remember um, I went to Thanksgiving to Puerto Rico a little while ago. And then I went again for, like... um. It wasn't Thanksgiving. It was just like for me to visit. And I remember the the Thanksgiving that I was there, one of my aunts, who's like super religious, was asking me if I had a boyfriend. And this is when I was dating women, but she just didn't know. Nobody knew. Nobody knew. Um, And it was like a little bit uncomfortable. And I was like, no, I'm busy. Like, <laughs> Yeah, so now you got to be like. Mm, I got to lie. I'm not like. And then yeah, now I'm uncomfortable. And I, and I was like, yeah, I'm busy. Like, I'm working. I'm going to school. I don't got time like, for why it. Why I even got to explain that to you? Yeah. And it was just, like, a little uncomfortable. Because, yeah. like, I feel like they could kind of tell a little bit. And then the year that I went again, and this time, I already came out to my dad. My sister, my stepmom, they all knew, except my aunt. Because I didn't feel need to come out to her, one. And two, religious. I'm not dealing with that. With the... The shame that some religious people really, you know, yeah. throw. So I'm so lucky and blessed that, like, my dad, I guess he had that conversation with her. Because mm-hmm. that conversation of, do you have a boyfriend, did not come up. So it was like boundaries that I didn't even need to set. I can't wait to visit. <laughs> but- <laughs> Boundaries that I didn't even need to set because she knows. Yeah. And like even my uncle didn't ask me that. Nobody asked me that. Nobody asked me, you're a boyfriend, are you dating? When are you getting married? When are you having kids? None of that. And I loved it. I was like, good. And I'm older now, which is like, I feel like that's when they really want to ask you, like, you about to hit 30. What's happening? Yeah. Um, and I was like, I'm so like glad. And like, I don't know if you guys have like not every, everybody doesn't have the privilege but like if you could ask your mom or like your dad like can you please like just stop them when they start with their questions yeah like, shut them down yeah so and i like, don't have to right and my mom she does that too like i remember my grandma she'll be like when are you having kids and my mom was like my mom be cutting her off she was like first of all not everybody wants kids mm-hmm. and that's okay right and i'm surprised that my mom said that once and i was like period because that's true. Like, yeah. even if I was in a straight relationship, not everyone wants kids. Stop asking people that. Or people are having issues having kids. And me having endometriosis, too. Like, it, it, even if I was in a straight relationship, it wouldn't be easy for me. Yeah. So those questions are uncomfortable. Stop asking them, please. I know it's like a conversation starter because you don't know what else to talk about. Yeah, let's do something else. Let's talk about something else. Yeah. Um, something I also wrote here is like to remind yourself that like your identity and experiences are valid. And I wrote that because sometimes people live literally in the middle of nowhere or their family lives in the middle of nowhere. And I feel like you kind of feel like you're in such a straight environment and in such a straight place that you're like, you feel like an oddball Mm -hmm. and you feel like you kind of need that gay shit. I don't know how to describe it. It's like, definitely like an a energy change. Right, especially when you're surrounded by it because maybe you're friends or yeah. like what you listen to or like whatever. So I wrote like, if you're visiting for the holidays and you're there for like a little bit, like bring a book that's like LGBTQ if you're like into that or like listen to a podcast, LGBTQ, like something that's going to make you feel like I am me and like I'm gay and I don't care that I'm around all these straight people because that's just not what i rock with right truly yeah you i feel like in environments like that you feel like you need to to turn your yeah like you gotta you gotta you gotta hit you gotta gotta tone it down yeah Uh and like you know when you're when your parents try to tell you like yo Mm -hmm. act right like Mm -hmm. don't embarrass me type shit so it's like you you automatically kind of feel that weight of like all right i can't i can't be the person that i was able to be away from here Mm -hmm. i have to be I have to tone it down. Right. And that shit's mine uncomfortable. Yeah, especially if you're visiting, like, 
First um, of all, I don't live here, no, so I don't care right. what nobody think about me. Right, I don't like, care how anybody feel. You don't got to be where I'm at. Right. But it's like, even when you go to these places, like, middle or no, I don't know. I'm going to just throw out a random Missouri. Like, I don't know. Or like, Nebraska. And you're just out here, and you're physically gay, and you're out in the world. You're going out. You're like, even Walmart or anything, and you're just like, wow. Like, it's just so different from, like, what I'm used to. Or if you're from the city or if you move far away or if you go to school and you have your community, mm. it feels weird. But don't – just know that it's temporary and you're going to go back to your, like, regular stuff. Yeah. All right. So the other thing I wrote here, related but unrelated, and I think it relates to, like, the holidays, but just, like, in general, it's, like, curating your social media – and just following people who like really inspire you and don't make you feel bad about what you're not doing. Um, I think this is major. Like just follow pages that are like inspiring, make you laugh, and don't make you kind of like question your life and where you're at. Cause I feel like the holidays are already stressful enough. And I think social like we're we're actually on social media a lot during the holidays. We have a lot of free time or whatever. Yeah. Um. But I mean, I would say limit it and try to do something with your family. But it's natural. We're always on our phones. We're addicted to it. Um. And I'm big it's like on muscle memory now. To yeah. Just be like, let me bro, pick it up. First thing and, you do, you oh, wake shit, up. You mind. look at your fucking Instagram. First of all, I have all my notifications off for social media. I don't need to know. And even for less chat because I can't. I can't keep up. And there's so many comments at times. But even then, it's like we're so accustomed to, like, the notifications and it becomes addicting. I would mm-hmm. say turn that shit off when it comes to that. You don't need to know. Like, the, leave it Leave it a surprise. Yeah. I love I a surprise. I love yeah. it. Like, oh, shit. My shit was jumping. That's cool. Let me catch up. Right. Um, If you can't unfollow people because you know that they're going to catch feelings, mute them. Who cares? I have so many people muted. <laughs> it's too damn bad. It, I don't care, man. Like I don't really relate to what you post to, and I don't want to see it. Yeah, coño. That's it. Um, but yeah, you gotta feel good about what you're following and what you're putting into your mind, what you're reading, what you're seeing, what you're listening to, what you're watching, everything. And then the last one that I have wrote here is journaling. Um. I feel like a lot of like the health gurus and like, I don't know, like the Jay Shetty's talk about like journaling and like I've heard about it. And I think for some people it's weird because it feels like you're writing in like a journal, like a little journal as like a kid. There's so many ways to journal though. Right. If There's you're so not many a, ways. If you're not a writing, like mm-hmm. a writing style type person, like some people like to write and have it on paper because it's just something calming about writing um you could always you're on your phone all fucking day right you know so go in your notes write this Mm -hmm. shit in your notes you know you can lock your notes now right so nobody can have access to that or see it do it in your notes do it do a video you know diary people do that they do Mm -hmm. video journaling where they kind of just record themselves and talk to themselves or voice memo Mm -hmm. i have said this before um i have I have a hard time keeping up with it because mm-hmm. um, sometimes I feel like I don't have things to talk about, but I'm always talking to myself up here anyway. Yeah. Um, but voice journaling, it's it's a big, mm-hmm. big way to like get shit off your chest. Mm-hmm. You don't have to go back and listen to it. I don't go back and listen to mine. It's just kind of like a maybe one day I will. Mm-hmm. Maybe I'll feel comfort in knowing like I'm in a better space now. Where was I right. at this time? You right. know, like it's just sometimes it helps us progress not only to get things off our chest mm-hmm. um, when we can't seem to like figure out what we're feeling or can't mm-hmm. just express that to just anybody. Mm-hmm. Um, but it also is a good way to revert back and see like, you know, how far you've come. Right. I agree with that. I've been doing the journaling in the in the notes where when I feel like just like too overwhelmed, too stressed, and like you wanna talk to someone, but it's like you don't wanna like overwhelm people or you don't wanna like you gotta ask for space sometimes because not everyone has that time to like hear hear you vent, hear you talk about stuff and like 
sometimes your friends be tired of it, honestly. So <laughs> I'll do like the voice memos and I'll do like the the notes. Um with the voice memos, I haven't listened back to it because it's been so recent, but I'm curious to listen back to it in like a year from now to see where I was because I've been in a space where I'm like, damn, I feel like really low. And then I'll go back to my notes and I'm like, oof, like it's giving, it's giving emo. <laughs> like, yeah. and, and, and you, you'd be surprised by how poetic you become when you're not feeling your best. And it's mm-hmm. not even about being poetic. It's just like you just write shit down and it just sounds poetic to me. I don't know. It I doesn't think matter. For me, with like doing the the voice um journaling, is that sometimes I just gotta say shit out loud and to like recognize that, that that's valid. Or like, yeah, that's what you're feeling. Um, but I think another thing for me is like sometimes I feel like I don't make sense. So I think that that's one of the reasons why it's like, I don't want to just run to anybody. One, I don't like to just talk to anybody about my shit because I don't like people um, getting to the point where like they know my shit and one, people can be shady and use that against you. We've seen it. We no, talked they about it at it. the beginning of this. And they do it all the time. And say, then we talked about, about it at the beginning of this with the Saya thing. She was in vulnerable spaces with a person she was with mm-hmm. and look what happened. Person mm-hmm. got their feelings hurt. And what did they do? They fucking, they go to destroy you with your own right. things that they, you know? So I don't fuck with that. Right. So that's one reason why I don't really talk to people often. I'm very picky on who I talk to because um, I don't want that shit thrown back in my face. And sometimes I feel like it don't make sense. So I feel mm-hmm. like I'm going to express something that they're not going to get. They're not going to mm-hmm. understand. And I'm just going to sound crazy. Yeah. So I'd rather just sound crazy to myself. Like... I just went to go look at one of my voice notes. Um, not not my voice notes, my like notes in the app, and I didn't finish it because I just was like so overwhelmed. But I like to start them off with like I feel this, this, and that. Like I feel overwhelmed, or like I feel sad, or like I feel stressed, and then I talk about like why is it that I feel stressed, and like what am I doing right now at this time that I'm like writing this? Where am I sitting? So how do I feel? Where, where am I? Um, just like writing it out and you don't have to come to like a solution or anything. It's just like talking about like, what is that that you feel and why, that you, why do you feel that way? Yeah. Um, so I think that can be helpful like during the holidays. And if you're still struggling with like, how do I even start this? There, I found some, like prompts where it can help you and it starts out I'll, I'll read some of them it starts off with like being queer is blank if i could do anything over the holidays i would blank blank are supportive and affirming of me you could write down five things that make you feel happy and describe why they make you feel this way in detail describe a perfect day to you uh write a letter to a person who has positively impacted you and you don't even have to send it to them you could just write it write down all the compliments you ever received or can think of write down compliments about people in your life what element do you consider to be you write them write about why um and they said like earth air fire water i think this could maybe relate to people who are like into like spirituality and like um horoscope zodiac all of that I think that maybe that ties in with them. Um, Write a love letter to yourself. Write about something random you've seen that made you smile. What makes you laugh? Describe an outfit that makes you feel completely comfortable in your own skin. Describe your dream house. So all of these could be fun, but this is just like a starting point on like, what do I journal about? What do I talk about? What's going to make me feel good? And make sure like you're in an environment where you're able to be that vulnerable with yourself. I think for me, I feel most comfortable in my car. I was literally just <laughs> gonna say that. In my car. I've done that shit in my car. I'm very Always. like I think that's my most comforting space. Like Isn't that tragic, I listen though? to music. Isn't that tragic? It is. It is. <laughs> it is. But it's kinda like a you not ready to go in your house or like uh-huh. in your space because you know that there's there's people around it's like that's where you're at your 
most alone. I don't even yeah, give a fuck yeah. if people are outside looking at yeah, me wondering no, why I'm in my I'm car. Yeah, no, because I'm like, the neighbors are looking. <laughs> For all they know, I'm talking on the phone. I don't know. I could be so passionate sometimes. They're like, what's happening? What's yeah. Happening? Well, that's why I got my windows tinted. If you see me from the front, damn. But I got my I need, windows tinted. I need tinted, my windows so tinted. I'm tired I'm of it. I'm trying to tell you. Nah, and then the neighbors, we wanted to say hi. Girl, yeah. I'm crying right now. So don't talk to me. That's why you got to go and listen. Sometimes, I I mean, I'm guilty for being parked outside the house. Uh-huh. But like when I used to live at my mom's, I definitely was like, there's neighbors come and go but it's not crazy we're on like a busy avenue so it's like all busy right. busy but shit go to the fucking parking lot at edge or target and park up far away and you know just just chat with yourself because sometimes it's like it it's just like let me get in a car and drive somewhere that's just not home or that's just not where you know the environment that makes me not feel comfortable or like i just don't want to be close to right now Mm-hmm. so sometimes it's like even if i sit in my car i'm sitting in my car at walmart or something mm-hmm. you know or like i'm going to get bubble tea and i'm just like let me sit here and right. enjoy my shit and then let me let me talk to myself mm-hmm. but that's for me is like i could do that in my car outside anywhere but i think my most um like when i'm really like in that sense like i'm gonna go to the park Mm -hmm. I like going to the park. That's another thing for me and sitting by like body of water. Like if Mm -hmm. I have a spot where I know like I could pull up and, you know, I had sent you that one the other day Mm -hmm. and I was like, you know, just like digress, Mm -hmm. you know? So that's always an option. And last, the last thing I want to talk about is chosen family. And a lot of people in the LGBTQ community talk about chosen family. I think it's a given why it's called that. Yeah. Um, do you feel like you've ever had to have like a chosen family in your life or I don't feel like I had to Mm -hmm. like, I don't, I don't know how I want to word that. I think when it came to my sexuality and understanding and navigating that part of myself, Mm -hmm. I had found that chosen family or I guess put myself in spaces where I was able to create that chosen family with my friends. Mm -hmm. Um, but not like as a whole thing, like as my family don't. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, get you. I don't have that support. Yeah. Lucky enough, I do have that support. But I think even when you do have that support, it's just like you still don't ha- always have the relation yeah. of like, you know, me being gay or like me navigating certain things that mm-hmm. sometimes your family really just don't understand. Right. Um. Yeah, I think this is major. Like, if you feel like you really can't relate to the previous things we talked about with your family and you truly cannot be with them and you don't talk to your family and you don't spend the holidays with your family, you got to find your chosen family and like make your own traditions. So like, yeah, coworkers, friends, like do like a little Friendsgiving or like a December, like dinner type of thing, a white elephant, like that's really what's going to make you feel good. And like during that time, maybe you can like decompress and like vent and just like talk about your feelings and talk about everything that's bothering you and like you don't want to make it all sappy but like have your fun but i think at the end of the night you do want to be like damn like it's crazy that i don't talk to my mom like it's crazy that this is the relationship i have where i don't talk to my sister and like so you just gotta let it out sometimes you just gotta like talk to someone about it and like who better to talk to than your chosen family like the people that Relate. you fuck with and yeah. like are like pretty much your family you know um so i think that's like major that's major that's important um it doesn't mean that i feel like a lot of times people are like well they're your mom or they're your sister or like they're by like bi- bi- what's it called biologically biologically related family, to right? you like yeah but if they disrespect you if they disrespect your relationship then it's like I can't. I can't be around you. Like, I just can't. Yeah. And that's okay. And you shouldn't be... F- People shouldn't make you feel bad for, like, the decision that you decided to make, you know? Yeah. Um. So, yeah. That's it for our holiday episode or holiday mm-hmm. gay. How to get through it for all my queer babes. Um, We're going to get into the family meeting now. Family meeting question number uno. Lesbian relationships and being friends with the next. I feel like this is more common among lesbian relationships and it's not really talked about. I've looked through several podcasts 
Currently, I am in a relationship with a woman who remains friends with her ex, who is also a woman. She's still getting over her ex. It was a toxic relationship. Although she claims she no longer wants a relationship with her ex, she still cares and loves her to some extent, which I understand, but is this normal? How much is too much communication with the ex? Can they really remain friends, especially when their relationship was toxic? Last time I talked about this, people had a problem with me. Because of the whole, I was just like, what is it with the whole being friends with your ex? Like, people was, okay, I'm saying people. It was probably like a few or one or two. But um, I forgot what, I forgot what the context was. But it was, I was just like, I don't understand it. Unfortunately, we allow it to be normal within the lesbian community. Is it normal? Yes, but it it doesn't have to be normal. But this is what bothers me about it. I get it. Like, it's like you had a relationship with this person. You guys were friends. You guys were a partnership. Like, it's like you don't want to just leave people in the dust and act like they never existed, whatever. Some of us could do that. Some of us can't. I just see it in a sense of, like, how can you progress in, like, future relationships or how do you respect your current relationship when you still have such a an, an attachment to someone you were in a relationship with, had trauma with, like had sex with, or live with, maybe was married to, or like it's someone like you're still wow, to. Well, it's like crazy to me. Like it's like you gotta have those boundaries. Like I'm not saying you gotta cut people off and act like you never met them, but like we don't need to talk. There's no need for us to be chatting and oh, how was no, there's no no. And like we talked about this so many times. Like you dated someone who you're friends with, but I love them. And like they're not someone who like they're married. One. Two, you guys had a relationship, but I wouldn't even say it was that serious. And it was like they're such a good person that I would never it doesn't bother me. Like it's like I I guess it really depends on the person. It depends on the situation, obviously. But, like, in this scenario, it's, like, they're saying that their partner is still friends with someone who they had a toxic relationship with. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, For me, I'm not out here, like, oh, yeah, I'm friends with all my exes. No, um, you're not. Like you said, I have that one situation, and that person really wasn't even an ex. Um we didn't pursue anything seriously or nothing. It was kind of like, you know, a fondle and that was it. We realized, you know, friendship is, is more necessary. Right. Like you guys should have been friends the whole time. Right. Exactly. And that's okay. Sometimes to notice that Mm -hmm. I understand those situations where it's like, you kind of pass the threshold thinking like it could, like it should have been more, but then you realize, no, we should have just been friends. Like we're cool peoples. Mm -hmm. Um, but I feel like when you've dated someone and you realize that the relationship, um, was toxic, and it didn't benefit you in any which way, how do you think that friendship is going to look? I just think it's really a hit or miss. If you guys had a friendship prior and built it and it wasn't toxic, okay. But it's just like, I don't know. I I just kind of feel like sometimes that toxicity still lingers around when you're friends with an ex that you had toxic relationships with like relations with Mm -hmm. i don't know i feel like i can understand if it was like uh all right well we just didn't go together or like you know we had some yeah differences and like you know we we keep on a friendly basis but right nothing crazy um but Mm -hmm. i just think like that that relationship that's now built or that friendship that's now built after the relationship of like we're in contact every day like yeah, that's too much content. We're doing too. Yeah, it's There's, just it's a, it's just like no need. Like, what are your best friends? Yeah. I like her question was how much is too much communication with an ex? Every day, even every week. Yeah, it's what like I, I talk, talk to you every hour of the day. I'm seeing you every day of the week or mm-hmm. like every other weekend. Or it's like I, you're constantly inviting this person when we're doing things, group things. No. Or like they don't have to be around all the time no, no, because no. now you're like overdoing it. 
Yeah, you're, like it's like, what is this a trapo? <laughs> No, it makes like, it hard for people to like accept the fact that you could pot- like you could potentially be friends with exes yeah. because you're you're taking advantage of that that situation or scenario where they are allowing you that slack to have that relationship with that right. person. But now mm-hmm. you're like, all right, well then you're cool with it all the way. So let me just be besties with this person. And like, nah, I ain't say all that. Next question. I've been together with my girlfriend for about four to five months. She's met my family and friends, has been over to my home, etc. But I haven't met any of her family yet, nor friends. Seems like she's waiting for the right time. I'm starting to feel like I'm being kept a secret for a strange reason. I've made it known, even on social media, that I have a girlfriend, but she hasn't even posted about me at all. Not even a simple tag. Should I be worried? I mean, four to five months is still early, but I do feel like not meeting friends is strange. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Like, the family thing is tricky because, like, Mm -hmm. does her family know that she came out? Are they accepting of it? Like, has she ever brought anybody home? There's, like, so many questions, obviously. But the friends thing is, like, why can't I meet your friends at least? And then the social media thing is tricky, too. Because I feel like some people would say four to five months isn't that long. Mm-hmm. But like. I mean, four I, to five I w- months I is fairly. I wouldn't tag people. I'm never going to tag you. Hmm? I'm never going to tag you. Tag me in what? I mean, now it's different. But like, I don't like tagging people because then people be like looking. They be looking like you're. I'm like, mind your business. I know motherfuckers be on your shit when yeah, I tag you. Yeah, I don't it. like that. So yeah. I don't think the tag is weird. I think that she should still post you. Or like, you know how people love doing the like, let me post everything for her face. That's cute. The little until, secret post. Until a certain extent. Because people be doing Because then people much. notice. Nah, it's cute until people do it. Like, it's like, okay, when are you ever going to show us their face? Like, be real. Yeah. Um. Like if she, she like she, if she always hides that she's like on a date or like doing cute stuff with you, then that's weird. Cause who cares what you're like? Who cares what social media thinks? It's just yeah. social media. But then people are like, "Well, I have my family there." Then block them. I don't know. Just me. I don't know. At some point, you feel a certain offense to the fact that oh, you didn't post yeah. me, or like I haven't shown, like you haven't. It's not even just the me making an appearance on your social media. It's off the strength of like you're showing me off because for some reason, I feel like that action gives some type of reassurance mm-hmm. or some type of like like vibe that like they fuck with you because they're showing you right. to their world, right? Um. But I feel like that's a sticky situation because it's just like, well, when's that going to happen? Like, especially if you're like not being shown to friends, family, nothing. If I'm I've been around your friends and whatever, then OK, cool. Like, because mm-hmm. I'm in your social circle. Right. I think like when you try to keep it too personal, where it's just always one on one and I'm not at all like involved or introduced to your social circle it's a little questionable to like, well, why, yeah. you know, I don't need to be on your social media. Let's get that fucking clear. But I want to be involved in your like mm-hmm. social yeah, places. Like, yeah, you got to bring it up. You have to. Yeah. Honestly, if it's bothering you and you're thinking about it is worth bringing up Yeah, to have a conversation about it, like, not hey, to make it a big I, deal and be like, your, yo, start with when am I meeting your friends? Or just how do you feel about meeting your friends? Yeah. You know, subtle and whatever. And then if she's just like, nah. All right. Then you could turn up because hold up. What is this? What's what good? Like, What are we doing then? Yeah. Is this like a hookup? What, what are we doing? But I wish you luck. Have that conversation. Let us know yeah. how it goes. But that's it for our episode today, you guys. Check out our Patreon. It is linked on everything on all our pod- podcast platforms as well as social media as well as youtube so feel free to check that out yeah, yeah. and thank you so much for listening don't forget to like share comment and subscribe those those mother goose Bye.